Hello everyone and welcome to NASCAR Studio 3. We're live on Twitter and YouTube here with Ryan Blaney and his old man Dave Blaney. You guys uh, get a little throwback action this weekend, Ryan, going to Darlington, throwing back to your dad's old paint scheme. Tell us a little bit about what inspired that. Yeah, um, you know, I thought it was something pretty cool to be able to do. You know, Menards let us do it and it kind of worked out with the colors of it, of it being his old Jasper car from 2002, 2003. And, uh, it was really neat to, you know, you always want to throw back to uh, something very memorable to you. And the last couple of years, it's been really cool to be a part of the Wood Brothers throwbacks cause, because I thought they were, you know, we threw back to Pearson and then Kyle Petty. And now to uh, be able to throw back to one of my dad's first uh, cup cars he was in, I think is uh, very special. And uh, he was a part of the unveiling, which was which was pretty neat. And uh, he didn't know anything about mm -hmm. it when he, uh, when he got there. So that part was uh, really cool. So you always want something memorable to you. And I don't think there was really anything better than that you gotta be honored I mean this young guy throwing back <clears throat> to your to your heyday in NASCAR yeah it was cool it was a surprise he uh made some kind of fake excuse for me to go over there to Penske and uh and unveiled the car so it was it was very cool and, um uh it was a, it was an honor to see him do it gotcha all right we are fielding fan questions on Twitter that is uh populating as we speak so let's cut to it and let's see, uh, Jay Reichert wants to know, have you ever uh, had the chance to race against the former NASCAR legend, Dave Blaney, <laughs> at any point in your career, Ryan? A couple times. Um, never in NASCAR. Uh, but well, we ran a truck race. At Eldora together. At Eldora, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I forgot about that one. Yeah, so it's been three times, I think. We ran a couple modified races together, and that, that truck race in 2013 where he waxed me pretty bad. And... Uh, I, the one I remember mostly <laughs> is uh, we did some, it was like a celebrity race up at, uh, where was that at? By Watkins Glen. I think it's called Black Rock Black Speedway. Rock. And uh, so they let a bunch of, you know, NASCAR drivers come out and uh, jump in these, you know, drivers who were racing that night. I think mm -hmm. we just jumped in their cars. And um, I think I started second. I think you started in the back. I got a good pill draw. And uh, <laughs> I ended up winning the race by like, a nose from him who come from the very back. Uh, he needed one more laugh and he would have just left me in the dust. But uh, that's the one I remember the most <laughs> personally. But um, yeah, there's been a handful of times. What about you? What do you teach him when you're out there? Uh, nothing, I'm sure. Um, those were just kind of fun races. Well, the the truck race at Eldora was, was, was a pretty cool race. I don't mm -hmm. know if you'd, well, I had, those things on dirt aren't really like any kind of dirt car. It's kind of a mixed thing, but um, that was a fun night. It didn't turn out great for either of us, but it was a fun night. Yeah. You had a chance to win that race, I remember. You were pretty good. Early in the race, I was, yeah. and then I didn't end up great, but but it was fun. Yeah, that was the inaugural. Yeah. That was 2013. That was the first one they did. Yeah. All right, next question from at Krose61912. Which is your favorite throwback decade? Ryan, we'll start with you. Uh, um, I don't know. You know, there's a, a lot of cool decades. Um, I really love the Pearson scheme we did from 76 when he won the Triple Crown. With the Wood Brothers that we did in 2016, um, that was probably my favorite one. So I, I'd say, I don't know, you know, the 70s and 80s I thought were pretty cool. But, you know, the 90s I remember a lot. Or early 2000s is what I grew up watching race and stuff like that. But I, I think you go back and watch old races. I like, you know, 70s and 80s painting schemes. I think they're pretty simple, but at the same time have a lot of nostalgia behind them. What about you, Dave? Yeah, probably 70s, 80s as well. <clears throat> you know, that's when I was, you know, growing up watching and, and, and could relate more to, you know, 70s Cale Yarbrough cars or 80s Darrell Waltrip cars or, or the Wood Brothers cars through those those times. But uh, those are cars I remember. Any old sprint car schemes that you may have ran in the past or liked in the past that it might translate well to one of these cup cars? <laughs> uh, well, we had a Casey Luna Ford car that yep. was um, – was mm -hmm. yellow, blue, and then and uh, was at that time was um, maybe only only Ford engine car and uh, sprint car. So it was it was kind of a you know widely known car. Yeah, yeah there it is. This one yeah, right here. <laughs> so yeah. that one would be cool. All right, CM eighty nine zero thirty one. I guess that's how you say that. Mm. Uh, wants to know if your dad's going to be at Darlington. I know the answer to this, but I'll let you break their hearts. No, he's not. <laughs> he's not uh, going to be at Darlington. Um, racing sprint cars this weekend so he won't be there yeah i hate that but um i agreed to that schedule <laughs> ahead of time and uh 
Um, well, not knowing anything about the throwback, I hate to miss the race anyway, but then the throwback thing, I hate to miss too. How do you guys balance that with, with keeping up with his schedule? And I mean, you guys race sprint cars, I mean, however many times a year, you guys are racing all the time. So what's that like balancing, keeping up with what he's got going on? Well, I'd rather, I'd rather be watching him, honestly, but I, this is the first year I've raced a lot in a, in a long time. So I felt like, um, I needed to race more to get better, and um, it hasn't really come true much. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's tough. I'd rather be at a lot of a lot of Ryan's, but obviously keep up as, as best I can with it. Gotcha. All right, at uh, Gina Lobman wants to know if you could see yourself being successful in any other sport for the both of you, what would it be? Some basketball pedigree in the family too, by the way. Dad was a good player. I was an school. okay. I was an okay player. My brother was a really good player. You know, drafted drafted in the NBA and, and by the uh, Lakers so not just drafted by anybody drafted yeah. by the Lakers yeah he was a good player really good college player at West Virginia and um, I didn't quite have the body type to go college basketball <laughs> neither of us do <laughs> no a bit too short but um, yeah that was that was big in our family my dad was a was a really good basketball player and it, and, and it was big you know like my brother so um, that's been part of our our life you know what would you do if you had your choice uh, I don't I don't really know I, I played basketball and middle school and stuff and and uh, I've always played just because it was part of our family and and uh, you know something uh, my dad and uncle and grandpa did but uh, like dad said I never really had the a little bit too small <laughs> to, uh, to go play that stuff but that was really the only you know stick and ball sport that I really ever enjoyed playing a lot and, and still do now. Laura Harrison wants to know if uh, the basketball portion of the Penske games was your favorite. Oh for sure yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw that on the sheet, and I was like, oh, I got this locked up uh, easy, and uh, I did. I, ended, I don't know if you guys have seen part two today, but uh, I ended up winning by a good bit. So the pop shot is my game. It's good. So I want to know personally, how's, how's Pagano to work with? I mean, the accent, everybody compares him to Jean Girard off yeah. Ricky Bobby. So how's that relationship? He seems like a, a pretty fun-loving guy. He is. He's a, he's a really, really great guy. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to get to know those guys you know, over the last handful of years, you know, from Simon to Will Power to LEO and uh, Joseph Newgarden, um, and now there's a couple of new guys on the, the sports car side. You know, this it, it's cool. Those Pesky games are pretty neat because we never really spend any time together um, other than that. You know, when you can get all of us in one room and we can just talk to each other about, you know, different types of race cars and kind of, you know, how everything is, is similar but different. and. Um, but they're, they're all great guys, and uh, they do a great job. I love watching them whenever I, I can, whether it's the IndyCar stuff or sports car series. I try to watch those guys whenever. So um, they, they're really good people. But, yeah, Simon is like the epitome, epitome of John Gerard and uh, Talladega Knights. And um, I don't know. There's just something about his accent and the way he looks. He's like a stunt double. He might have been the stunt double driver for him. You never know. So Michael wants to know on Twitter uh, if you could race any track again and change something uh, – that you did to make the outcome different what is that one race that sticks out in your head um yeah the first race that sticks out in my head is a uh, forget what year it was 14 or 15 uh at indianapolis that xfinity race was it 14 no it was 15 because uh -huh. i had the cup race the next day yeah it was 2015 my first time uh with penske at indy and uh first time i'm gonna run a cup car there on sundays and and um Run pretty good most of the race, second or third, fourth most of the race, and got a chance to line up on the front row the last restart with maybe 20, 25 to go. And um, Kyle Busch was dominating that race, and we beat him on the restart. And I led, with 25 to go, I led about 24 and a half laps. <laughs> uh, and I gave away off two, and he ended up passing me and winning the race. And um, gosh, that was just devastating. You know, how many times are you gonna be able to win a race at, at Indianapolis for Roger Penske? And that was rough, uh, that was the roughest, I think loss I've ever had, but if I could do that race over again, that's that's any race over again, that's the one that really sticks out in my head, just because, uh, you know, that was a, a really tough one, kind of early off in, in my career when I was just getting going. What about you? Hmm, I don't even know. Um, well, you're going to Darlington this week. Remember that race, Kurt Busch. Yep. Ricky Craven race, yep. you know, if there'd have been yeah. one more sucker punch there by one, yeah. I, I might have won. You were the guy ran third. Yeah. There was yeah. a, a small <laughs> yellow dot there in that screen, and yeah. it kept getting bigger and bigger towards the end of that thing. It did. Sure so did. I don't know if I, what I could have done, but one of those could have done something. <laughs> one of those guys could have helped me out. 
<laughs> Never know. You can replant it. Something could work. Something could work out for you. All right. Let's see. What's the what's the hardest part about racing at Darlington? Oh man, I you know, Dad's run there a lot more times than I have, but uh, the few times I've run there, just so different than any other racetrack you go. You know, it's in between a mile, a mile and a half, and uh, I think there's multiple things that you can point out. Whether the groove's super narrow. Uh, the two different ends of the racetrack are way different from each other. Uh, the way the tires wear out is really tough. And just being able to run 500 miles there and not break concentration for one of those miles, that, uh, that's, that's pretty hard, And uh, especially when you're running inches away from the wall. So um, there's multiple things. Take your pick of uh, what's super tough there. But I, I personally think it's the hardest race of the year that we go to as far as uh, you know, mental um, toughness and physical toughness. It, uh, it'll wear you out pretty quick. What do you remember about racing there? Well, my, my main times there were, you know, early 2000s, and that's when the track was probably at its slipperiest, you know, slowest, uh, most abrasive. So it was, it was tough. It was more of a mental exercise and not tearing the car apart. You, know, you, you just had to run right on the fence. There was not even an option of a bottom groove in those years. So not tearing your car up was the biggest thing and being disciplined on – um, how hard can I run and do this all day? All right, gentlemen, we appreciate you joining us on YouTube yep. and Twitter. We appreciate you guys watching as well. And you can catch Ryan out on the track. Even Dave can watch up in Ohio <laughs> as he races his sprint car. It's Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern time on NBCSN.